Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Colored Paradox Engine combo deck, and I wanted to build this deck as soon as a Relic of Legends got previewed. A 3 mana artifact from Dominaria United can tap for 1 mana of any color, and we can tap an untapped legendary creature we control to also add 1 mana of any color, and this also gets around Summoning Sickness. So Relic of Legends is perfect to fit into this Paradox Engine combo deck. Paradox Engine, a 5 mana legendary artifact that says whenever we cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. So this is very powerful alongside plenty of mana creatures, like our 8 1 mana elves, as well as our ramp artifacts like Mox Amber and the new Relic of Legends, which not only makes 1 mana itself, but for every legendary creature we can also make 1 mana of any color, so that can also be untapped with our Paradox Engine. Now we still need lots of spells to keep untapping everything over and over again, and that's where the Reconfigure on Reality Chip can come in handy. Then we can cast spells off the top of our deck and play a land for the turn as well. Now we might get stuck with a bunch of lands on top, but then we have the new Scholar of Antiquity, which can tap two untapped and non-token artifacts we control to exile the top card of our library, and we may play it this turn, so that can get rid of excess lands, but also just find more spells we can cast off the top of our library. Can also tap untapped and non-token artifacts we control to add green mana, which can be useful if we don't have Relic of Legends, and we maybe want to use our reality chip to make green mana, can even tap the Paradox Engine itself which will also be untapped with its ability, so we can now make a lot of mana and see a lot of cards. What's our eventual win condition? That's going to be Aether Flux a Reservoir, a 4 mana artifact, saying whenever we cast a spell, we gain 1 life for each spell we've cast this turn, and it also kind of backtracks to count how many spells we've already cast, so this might gain a ton of life as soon as we cast a spell following a Reservoir, and then we can pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to any target, so we can easily get above 50 if we string together all our Paradox Engines with our card draw engines, and then once we get above 50, we just pay 50 to deal 50 damage to the opponent and one hit KO them. So that's our primary game plan. We also have three copies of Karn as the Great Creator to help us out, as it can minus two to not only grab Paradox Engine, but also our Aether Flux Reservoir. And once we have our Paradox Engine making mana and Reservoir gaining life, all we need is an Ancestral Statue, a 4 mana 3 4 that when it enters a battlefield returns a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand, so it can also pick up itself with its own ability, which is exactly what we're gonna do, since now we can keep replaying the statue over and over again while making more mana and gaining more life until we get above 50 to win the game. So that's why we have three copies of Karn to grab all these different combo pieces. Also have a Sky Sovereign to maybe deal with opposing creatures or planeswalkers. Can also animate it using Karn's plus one ability if we don't have a creature to crew it. And then we also have a backup reality chip to provide more card advantage. And a Tormod script can be important against some graveyard combo decks, which may be faster at killing us if they get a Grease Fang plus Parhelion going. So that's why Tormod script can also come in handy, as we can quickly grab it with Karn and prevent the opponent from going off. And then uh, looking through the rest of our deck, we of course mentioned four copies of Mox Amber, great with all our legendary creatures, then we've got our eight one mana elves, and then a Moonsnare prototype can tap an untapped artifact or creature we control to add a colorless, so this is like a smaller version of Relic of Legends that only makes colorless mana, could also channel it to use it as removal, but it's mainly here to combo with Magda, Brazen Outlaw, which now can not only make colorless mana, but also makes a treasure when it becomes tapped, since it typically doesn't get a chance to attack to make treasure, and then Magda of course also amazing alongside our Relic of Legends. And once we get 5 treasures in play with Magda, we can sacrifice them to search up any artifact in our deck, so that can maybe find a missing Paradox Engine, or even our Aether Flux Reservoir if we're just missing a win condition. And then a Kinnon Bonder Prodigy, another important piece of the puzzle, 2 mana 2-2 two, two Legendary Human Druid, saying whenever we tap a non-land permanence for mana, add 1 mana of any type that permanent produced. So now all of the sudden our elves, Mox Amber, and the first ability on Relic of Legends will all make 2 mana instead of just 1, giving us a huge mana boost, and we can sink 7 of that mana into looking at the top 5 cards of our library, putting a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, so that can also find some of our missing combo pieces, as almost all the cards in our deck are non-human. And then at 3 mana, besides our Scholar of Antiquity, we also have 4 copies of Emery, which we can often play around turn 2, thanks to the early Mox Amber, 
and then this will mill four cards when it enters, can also tap it and choose an artifact card in our graveyard that we get to cast this turn, so this can get a ton of cards back out of our graveyard, all the way from Mox Amber to Reality Chip to some of our win conditions like a Reservoir and our Paradox Engine, and we can also untap it with Paradox Engine to maybe get back multiple artifacts in the same turn, so it can provide a ton of value. And then of course Relic of Legends, the card that makes the entire deck tick, and then we discuss Karn, Reservoir, and Engine. Our mana base has just one basic in case of Field of Ruin. That's maybe the color the opponent's gonna try and remove with their Field of Ruin, as opposed to blue and green, which is more represented and can also be generated with our elves more easily. And then plenty of uh, dual lands here, including all eight fast lands with Sanctum and the Spire Bluff, and then some shock lands and some pathways to round out the mana base. And then also very important to note is Gigantha, the Wellspring as our companion, can also potentially be a legendary creature to combo with Relic of Legends. If we have a lot of mana, it can be an extra spell to potentially kickstart our Paradox Engine to keep going, and also just a 5-5 that can tap to add one of each color that we can spend on non-generic costs, so it can also just function nicely alongside Paradox Engine to make more mana and cast more spells. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, with a promising start. Reservoir in hand is a little awkward, but we can allow it. And I'm gonna need to shock myself to keep the red for our scholar. Opponent red-white, looks like heroic. Alright. So turn two. Can play relic, can play scholar. Probably want to play Relic, so we can have the option of Karn next turn. And then Karn potentially finds Paradox Engine. Opponent with a Defiant Strike for now. And Ancestral Anger. So Hoplite already picking up two counters. Alright, another Elves. So, yeah, I think we still play our Scholar here. And that will be able to make mana as well. Can play another Elf. And then next turn, potentially Karn minus and get something going. If I play Karn now, I guess I can play another Elves, get a Paradox Engine, and then maybe already play Paradox Engine next turn, while soaking up some damage of Hoplite, and we already have Reservoir, so we're just missing something to keep casting over and over again. Yeah, I guess I can buy that too. Uses up more of our mana this turn as well. I will I will and I don't think Sky Sovereign's gonna be able to do much here. So yeah, let's get Engine. And then a reality chip would also be a good pickup if we find another Karn, assuming this one dies. I imagine if they had a Reckless Rage we would have seen it last turn, but they might have drawn into it. Hoplite just going face. Okay. Could be scary if they can pump it a whole lot. A Rampage is plus four. Word five. So a big turn coming up. Okay, so I can play Paradox Engine and then cast Prototype to untap everything. Then we can play our Scholar. So this all makes mana. Okay, now we can minus Karn to get our statue. You will not threaten this world. So now double tap Q can float some of our mana. Can make more mana here. Play a Reservoir. And then we should have the kill here. 
Your opponent was hanging on to Reckless Rage for some reason. Well, it might be too little too late. Get to untap everything. Make some more mana. Actually, they should have used Reckless Rage on Statue here, which could have actually saved them. So, yeah, we got pretty lucky that our opponent doesn't understand how our deck operates. Pick up Statue again. And yeah, we can do this a few more times until we get to 50 life and then kill the opponent. Well, that was pretty impressive. Opponent had the interaction, but didn't know what was happening. And this is a turn 4 kill, I believe. Probably don't need to keep making mana, although we could eventually cast a Gigantha as well if we wanted to, which would then also make more mana with Relic of Legends. So it could actually start netting a little bit more. But there we go, we're at 50, so need to cast one more spell. Otherwise, we would lose the game. And that should be enough. Okay, could also pick up Karn again at some point. 50 to the face. That was satisfying. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is promising if we can find red mana for Magda. So it is a bit of a risk, but I'll try it. And then for now play this tapped. Any second land lets us play a turn to Emery. And I thought he's, he's gonna have a look. So at least our hand's decent against hand disruption since we have so many spells. And yeah, we can play a turn to Emery now. Milling some juicy artifacts, including our wing condition. Put under red, black, and Croxa. Gonna make his discard. So could discard Paradox Engine since we can later get it back. And uh, it's also the most expensive card, so at least likely to play it in time. The relics greats. So can play relic and replay prototype for now if we'd like. That seems reasonable. And then we've got some artifacts to tap with our Scholar to draw more cards. And Liliana gets rid of Emery, sadly. Enough with the mysteries. I've <laughs> and the reality chip's not bad. Okay, so let's say we play Scholar, then we can play a Reality Chip. Even though if they kill Scholar, Reality Chip doesn't do much by itself. Could just play Karn. Don't get to kill Liliana, since I need to tap a Relic, Mox Amber, and Prototype. So I can't use a minus two to finish off Liliana here. But that's also consideration. Yeah, maybe we just play Karn. And then minus. And we could get something like Sky Sovereign as well, which is good at dealing with Planeswalkers. And maybe we get to cast it next turn. Fable for now. So what do we discard to the plus one? Maybe the Scholar, keep Reality Chip. And then... Can also potentially plus Karn on the Relic to pressure Liliana. Found a Kinnon. Okay, that should enable some powerful synergies here. 
click in on play Sky Sovereign. Reality chip should be pretty much free. And then we can still Sky Sovereign. And uh, let's tap manually. Do we go after Liliana or do we kill the Shaman? Probably kill Liliana. And then Karn could minus or we could keep uh, Karn at 3, maybe even plussing on one of our current artifacts. Maybe on Prototype. In case of another Liliana we can sack it to the Edict. And then next turn we could animate Sky Sovereign as well, with Karn. Opponent can escape Croxa, but they're gonna stomp Kinnon. They could have taken out Karn with a stomp as well. So a slightly different approach. So we don't have any creatures to reconfigure this onto until we plus Karn on Sky Sovereign to enable it. And then we can tap Reality Chip for mana using a Relic. This makes mana. We can reconfigure and uh, play the land of the top. Elves we can play and put a Giganta in hand, keeping Mox Amber to discard. And Sky Sovereign can finish off Harvester. Okay, opponent's at 11. They won't be able to kill Karn on the board unless they activate Hive, but then they're not escaping Croxa. So Mox Amber can go. And then Reflection probably has to die next turn to the Sky Sovereign. Okay, there's an Emery on top. And then the question is whether it's worth it to reconfigure or if we just try and play Gigantha instead. So that's turned on. So Sky Sovereign attacks, killing Reflection. And then probably fine to take two. Play Gigantha. And then we should be able to reconfigure and play a one mana Emery. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty decent. If the elves survive, they can make two mana with Kiln. Turn one Epicure off for red white, so probably a Grease Fang Parhelion deck. Okay. So they might have a bit of removal here. Take the one. Croxa to make his discard. One Kinon can go. Alrighty, so play Kinon. Although the two mana from Elves doesn't really help with anything. So, could also go for a reality chip here instead. And there's a chance we can actually channel Prototype to use it as interaction. So. Sure, I'll play a reality chip. Find an elves on top. So that's going to be coming up next turn. And then we have to decide between Karn and uh, potentially something else. And then if Parhelion shows up in the graveyard, we have a nice sideboard Tormod script to search up. Now, we might already have to play Karn and get Tormod script this turn. 
because their opponent can discard Parhelion and then cast a Grease Fang, which would be pretty bad for us. So yeah, I think it's just Karn minus get Tormod Script to prevent the opponent from comboing us, even though it slows down our own game plan. And then at least Reality Chip can maybe soak up some damage. And then next turn we can maybe keep going with Kinnom. And then we can also use Tormod Script to prevent Croxa from escaping. And yeah, they had the Parhelion. Do they have the Grease Fang? We can wait on activating Crypts until they go for it. And another Fable instead. Okay. There's a Sanctum on top. So... Karn can also plus on the opponent's artifacts to basically kill him. And I guess we'll go for the Blood Token. So that's gone. Then we can play Kinnom. Elves makes two mana. So I have four total. And then we could also play Prototype and use Reality Chip. Um, and maybe put a Giganta in hand. Or we can keep the channel ability available. Um, I think I like getting Giganta going here. So I'll play an Elves, put Giganta in hand. And pass. I'm not really interested in trading Kinnon for a Shaman, so... Karn could be under some pressure. Three cards in Graveyard total. But Fable still gives the opponent a fair game plan without needing to combo with Parhelion. Especially if they can combine it with a Blood Tithe Harvester at some point. Ah, there's Grease Fang. So yeah, we'll let the trigger go on the stack, use Tormod Script. Since they're forcing our hand. And then... Yeah, probably let Karn take two, unless we want to jump with an Elves, so we can get Paradox Engine next turn and maybe get somewhere. Yeah, that may be worth it. And then Kinnon should be better than an Elf. Alright, Relic of Legends on top. That could be great. Now, I can play Paradox Engine and then still play Prototype to untap. And that's probably where things end. So we'll just play Sanctum and pass. And hope they don't have a backup Parhelion ready to discard. Harvester would also be bad, so... Yeah, there's still lots we need to dodge. But at least we put ourselves in a position to potentially win the game. Reflection copies Shaman. Okay. And Karn's gonna die here. Can eat uh, Apicure with Kinnon. And that's about it. Sky Sovereign, hard cast. Yeah, that can kill Kinnon. Okay. At least we still have our reality chip. But, uh, yeah, this game is gonna slip away very quickly. Another engine on top is awkward after we search one up. So, can make some mana here. Play a relic. Make 
Make some more mana. Play Gigantha. And then I can reconfigure Reality Chip onto maybe Gigantha. And uh, yeah, that's probably it for now. So pass it back. Their opponent crews Sky Sovereign. And kills the Elf. Okay. Take six. And another relic on top. Alright, time to make some mana. Cannot tap the reality chip with the Relic of Legends, but can with Prototype. Okay, found Scholar, that's nice. So let's float some more mana. Mox Amber, so we're getting somewhere. Haven't played land yet. Magda on top. So let's keep floating mana. So we have a lot of Gigantha mana in here too that we can necessarily use for everything. But I can use the Scholar's ability to exile the top card. And once again... Another Paradox Engine we can cast. Make treasure with Magda. And uh, I guess we'll use Gigantha for regular mana now. Gas engine. Another engine on top, we find all of them. Well, we're still generating mana here. Okay. Make sure we squeeze every last bit of mana out of it here, since we might need it. Okay, so once again, exile. Mox Amber we can cast, float all our mana. And I think I'll skip some mana steps now. Since we might time out otherwise, Kinnon's great. Make sure we tap Magda at least to make a treasure, since we can use that to get our win condition. Exile top card. Emery we can cast. Okay, so we've got all the mana we need now. So I'm not necessarily going to tap every creature every time. So now Magda can get her Reservoir. And then we should just be able to cast a few more spells to win the game. Maybe eventually find a Karn as well to get Statue and start looping that. And that does it. Wow, very grindy game here against Mardu Greasefang. 
on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's got potential to run Elf, can set up turn 2 Emery thanks to Mox Amber too, so give it a shot. And then hopefully Emery mills like a Relic of Legends, opponent on a Sacrifice deck. Okay, another Mox Amber, not super useful right now. Couldn't quite play turn 1 Emery since we can only keep one Mox Amber in play at the same time. So Mayhem Devil could be quite devastating once that shows up and kills all our elves. But at least they don't have a claim to steal my elf and put it in the oven. Okay, there's a Relic. So if I play Emery for 2 mana, then I can still tap Mox Amber for blue. Play another one. Doesn't really help me cast anything else here. But yeah, the alternative is just a Lenor Elves, so I think we still play Emery. And then pass. Could have used a second land. But uh, at least there's a 4-drop to get back eventually. Priests could be scary. Although for now we get to keep Emery and the Paradox Engine the draw. Alrighty, so Mox Amber can make a mana. Play another Mox Amber. Either way I could play a Relic first. And then use the Relic plus Emery plus Mox Amber to play Scholar. Is that the move? Yeah, I could see that. So play Relic. And then won't get any value with Emery this turn, but that's okay. Still tapping for mana. So a red. A blue. And a green. Cast Myria. And then I can sack Elf to Priest. If they activate it. And then we can tap Myria with Relic to play another Elves. Okay, so that was a pretty decent turn. Hope to dodge Mayhem Devil. If they activate Priest, we just sack an Elf. Chandra's fine, can enable Priest, but we can probably live without one Elf. Alright, there is a priest activation. Elf down. And three mana remaining. For a fable of the mirror breaker. Okay, that's acceptable. So we get to untap. And a kinon. Okay. So now what? Play kinon. And then. Do we have enough mana for Paradox Engine afterwards? One, two, three, four, five, we should. And then we can cast Karn and potentially keep going. Alright, Emery can get back our Aetherflux Reservoir from the graveyard. And then Karn can get our second combo piece. So let's float some mana. Make some more green. Play Reservoir. And that should do it. Wow, on a single land? Can you imagine? Get Statue. Float more mana. But yeah, we don't even need to fully combo off here. Just Statue is going to be enough. But could do more fun things in the meantime if we wanted to, like activating Kinnom, 
Emery, draw more cards with our scholar. But we'll keep it simple. Yeah, this is a pretty crazy deck once it goes off. And it's a Relic of Legends, an amazing addition for the archetype. And 50 to the face, there we go, sweet. So yeah, we got to combo off a few times here, and Relic of Legends proving to be an incredibly important piece of the puzzle to combo off with our Paradox engine, and then the Scholar also quite nice making mana and providing card advantage. So the deck seems to have it all covered now from all different angles, but of course still very much disruptable if you've got removal and hand disruption and a fast clock, so it's by no means an unbeatable deck, but as far as combo decks go, it's quite resilient as it has multiple avenues to combo off and provide extra mana and card advantage, Gigantha also a very nice addition as companion, so it seems like a pretty well-rounded combo deck if you're looking for one in Explorer. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.